We going live. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. I'm just going to go shut the door because it's late. People are sleeping. Where were we? Welcome, welcome. Hello. Uh, welcome, people. Um, so, welcome to my channel. I'm Mira Manga. I read lots of books about Warhammer and things like this. These are the current books that are on my bedside table. Fulgrim by Graham McNeil. Um, very excited. This is number five in the Horus Heresy. Um, yeah, have not yet got stuck in, but I have a two hour train journey tomorrow. So I will be Fulgriming. Um, Honor Guard by the mighty Dan Abnett. Um, I have started this. Um, yeah, I'm already pretty into it, although this book is very much set in Gaunt's Ghosts are taking over a city. So it's like the combat is occupational combat in a city and Gaunt's Ghosts are not, they're not winning at the beginning. So quite hardcore. And then the other thing I've been reading recently is this epic old school Warhammer book, um, Ignorant Armies. And it's edit part, edited by David Pringle. And this was published eons ago in 1989, which brings me to today's stream. Hey, Joshua. Hello and welcome. Hi, Christopher de la Mer with my favorite name on YouTube. It is very live. It's 11.20 at night here in the UK. Um, yeah, I had a lovely day, a bit of a heavy conversation with my flatmate. So we thought we'd play a game together and turn the day around. So, yes. So quick update. So I'm going to be foregrooming tomorrow on my two hour train ride. I am honor guarding um, as well. Although, as I say, this is a city under occupation, so I may delay reading that one. Hey, thanks, Steve. So do I. It's only from here to Richmond and back. And then this one. Um, I finished reading. It is amazing. I agree, Mr. Pixels. I'm actually going to be talking about this on 28 Magazine podcast with the main editor, Alexander. Also, Jordan Sorcery fans, Jordan has definitely done a video on this and is doing all the classic Warhammer. So head over to see Jordan Sorcery, who is, he's a lovely, 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 how would I describe him? Epic lore enthusiast lover of cats and all-round good guy, Jordan Sorcery. Um, so yeah, those are my Warhammer plans. Um, in the meantime, I thought this evening we could play together. So uh, this book, actually my flatmate was talking to me. Fiona and I share loads of uh, love of RPG in common. Uh, she has an amazing podcast called What Am I Rolling? where she plays loads and loads of RPGs. She also has like a GM's book club, a DM's book club. Um, so, but she had never, ever played a fighting fantasy book. So I was explaining like back in the eighties, we all played them. Like in the playground, you would bring along your book um, and you would play, you know, this was entertainment for us in the olden days. If you're of a certain age, I think that is the age of the grognard. So if you remember these, uh, welcome. If you've never played them before, this is what happens. We are entering an adventure through this book. And as we go through the book, there will be options. So we can choose what to do. I'll just pick a random one. Um, as you leap across the table, the sorcerer spins around. You stumble and crash to the ground as you see he has to. Anyway, this is spoilers. But basically, we can go, will you continue your attack or retreat from him? And when we make that decision, we turn to that page. So that's how we play. So I'm going to read. I'm the narrator of this journey. You're going to tell me what we're doing. That's the plan. In the meantime, if you want to ask me stuff about Warhammer or tell me stuff about Warhammer, that is not spoilers. Please feel free because no matter what I decide to do on this channel, it all comes back to Warhammer. So, so let's let let us begin. If you're sitting down comfortably, let's begin. <gasps> also, um, yeah, this is a signed copy. To Mira, good luck. 
There you go. <laughs> I love meeting authors. Okay. Has anybody here played a book before? Okay. So this is the introduction. The lawful good folk of the Vale of Willow have lived for some eight years in awe and fear of the demi-sorcerer Balthus Dyer. In awe since his power is truly awesome and in fear ever since word leaked from his domain that his ambitious plans of conquest were to commence with the Vale itself. A faithful half-elf sent on a spying mission to the Black Tower came galloping back to the Vale three days ago with a frantic warning. From within the caverns of Crag and Rock, Balthus Dyer had recruited an army of chaotics and was preparing them to attack the Vale within the week. The good King Solomon was a man of action. Messengers were sent throughout the Vale that day to prepare, de to prepare defences and summon the menfolk to action. A bit sexist, but it was the 80s. Riders had also been sent to the Great Forest of Yore to warn the half-elves that lived there and to make the appeal for allied forces. We all know the more forces you can get that are allied, the better chances. Hi, Eric. Welcome. Hi, Steve. Chubby godchild. The story that I really want to see done in 40k is the origin of the emperor and how he made Primark babies. Um... Okay, so back to King Salomon. King Salomon was also a wise man. He knew well that the news would inevitably reach the Grand Wizard of Yore, a white sorcerer of great power who lived deep within the forest. The wizard was old and would not last through the battle of this magnitude. Oh, bless him. But he scored a number of young magicians and perhaps one of his students in the magic arts with courage and ambition would aid the king and his subjects. You are the star pupil of the Grand Wizard of Yore. He's been a difficult master and your own impatience often got the better of you. Perhaps a little too headstrong, you left immediately for Salomon's court. The king welcomed you enthusiastically and explained his plan. The battle could be avoided without bloodshed if Balthus were to be assassinated before his army could be amassed. This sounds like a mission for a, a Tanith, really. Anyway, I digress. The mission ahead of you is extremely perilous. Balthus Dyer is surrounded in his citadel by a, num a multitude of appalling creatures. Although magic is your strongest weapon, there will be times when you must rely on your sword to survive. King Salomon has briefed you on your mission and warned you of the dangers that lie ahead. One way through the citadel is the best for you to take. If you discover it, you will be successful with a minimum of personal risk. It will take you several trips to find the easiest way through. You leave the Vale of Willow on the long height to the Black Tower. At the foot of the hill of Crag and Rock, you can see its outline against the dark sky. So are we ready? Are we ready? So this is the first picture. Um, Ogre, I love these books. Yay, Eric, if you stay with us, you'll get to play one. Robert K. Bennett says, Steve Jackson, not the Steve Jackson from Steve Jackson Games. Absolutely that's Steve Jackson. Mr. Pixels, I recommend the Genevieve Undead collection. I feel like someone sent me that, Mr. Pixels. Robert K. Bennett, yes, did you make your character? Okay. So we're beginning the adventure now, everybody. The sun sets. As twilight turns, I hope this narration voice is okay. I've got different narration voices. I've gone for this one. The sun sets. As twilight turns to darkness, you start your climb up the hill towards that forbidding shape silhouetted against the night sky. The citadel is less than an hour's climb. Ash Main, the rules for the Citadel of Chaos is no one talks about the rules for the Citadel of Chaos. No, not really. Um, the rules are we read the book together. I'm going to give everyone the choices and everyone's going to vote. And then we'll follow the choice and we'll see if we win. OK. The Citadel is less than an hour's climb. Some distance from its walls, you stop to rest. A mistake, as it seems a fearful spectre from which there is no escape. The hairs on your neck prickle as you look towards it. But you are ashamed of your fears. With grim resolve, you march onwards towards the main gate where you know guards will be waiting. You consider your options. You've already thought about claiming to be a herbalist, come to treat a guard with a fever. You could pose as a tradesman or an artisan, perhaps a carpenter. 
You could even be a nomad seeking shelter for the night. As you ponder the possibilities and the yarns you will have to spin the guards, you reach the main trail leading up to the gates. Two lanterns burn on either side of the portcullis. You hear muffled gruntings as you approach and two misshapen creatures step forward. So that's the picture to illustrate the misshapen creatures. I actually think this one looks kind of cute. And this guy looks like a kanga werewolf. I'm selling these fine leather jackets. Yes, Wombat, let's hope that's an option. Also, the very cool thing about these books, each of the page numbers is dice. Um, so that's page seven. Very cool. And everybody loves six-sided dice if you love Warhammer. Some sort of little sheep fellow. Yes, Stefan, a little sheep fellow. Okay, actually it's described differently. On the left stands an ugly creature with the head of a dog and the body of a great ape flexing its powerful arms. Its opposite number is indeed opposite with the head of an ape on the body of a large dog. Oh, not a sheep head, an ape head. The latter guard approaches you on all fours. It stops some meters in front of you, raises itself on its hind legs and addresses you. Which story will you opt for? Will you pose as a herbalist? Will you claim to be a tradesman? Or will you ask for shelter for the night? Now this is over to you. What would you like to do? Would you like to be a herbalist, bringing herbs to tend to the fever of a guardsman? Would you like to be a tradesman, selling some fine leather jackets? Or will you ask for some shelter for the night? Joshua says shelter. Christopher de la Mare, the sheep thing looks like a human trapped in an animal's body. <laughs> agree, agree. Asking for a shelter seems the simplest story to present. Trader. Everybody, um, mad props to Somicron. Somicron is in my YouTube membership. He came in at Titan level and has also um, been sending me some of these really lovely, you can send tips and gifts. Um, so everyone be lovely to Somicron. Very, very happy to see you, a big supporter. And it's people like you being nice to me that make me continue this nonsense. So thank you, welcome. So Stefan says, trader, barhammer, ask humbly for shelter. I'm always humble. Eric, shelter, Stefan, appeal to their greed. <laughs> uh, hi, and full Monterey. Hi, Mira, hi all. Okay, so I think we're going to go for shelter. So we need to turn to page, turn to 20. Are we ready? We could be all over so soon. Oh my God, fighting fantasy. My childhood paraded before my very eyes, keeping all my fingers wedged. <laughs> yes, we're not gonna cheat. That's cheating. Keeping all my fingers wedged into previous pages was the original version of quick save slash quick load. So true, so true. Tell me how to pronounce that name. I don't wanna get it wrong. Um, okay, so we ask for shelter. I'm gonna role play this. Good sirs, I wonder if you had any shelter for a humble traveller, a nomad through the night. Please, for the weather looks to be turning foul and I have nowhere to go. So that's what we would say. The ape dog tells you that no one is allowed into the black tower after dark. You will have to look elsewhere for shelter. Here come our choices. You may either resign yourself to a fight or you may pick up a stone and cast a fool's gold spell on it, offering them a nugget of gold as a bribe to let you in. Deduct the gold, the fool's gold spell from your spells if you use it. Did I even know that we had spells? I think I maybe should have looked at the rules first. Let's see. What would you lot like to do? Let me read them out again. Resign yourselves to a fight. Good morning, Brendan. Um, or... Offer a nugget of gold as a bribe to be let in. Like Ian, except with a hard C at the start, Kian. What a lovely name. Hello, welcome, welcome. So I didn't read the rules because I'm just not that kind of girl. <laughs> I normally just let, sit at the table and someone tells me what I can and can't do. So I'm going to quickly look up what spell shot slots. Oh, you have to roll dice. I'm just going to say we have all the spells so we can pick from more options. So 
The ape dog tells you no one is allowed into the Black Tower after dark. You will have to look elsewhere for shelter. You may resign yourself to a fight, or you may pick up a stone and cast a full gold spell on it, offering them a nugget of gold as a bribe to let you in. Deduct the fool's gold spell from your spells if you use it. We won't. We're going to have all the spells. So if you would like to have a fight, right fight. If you think we should bribe with this stone that we're going to turn into a gold nugget, let's do that. Wait, is it like real gold? It just looks like gold for Monterey. Tall geese, you winning. Always winning at life. Bribe, bribe, bribe. Give them gold. Bribe. <laughs> <laughs> Full Monterey, fight since it's more honest. And then Kiana says, fight. Okay, so that's quite bribey. I don't know that we're an honest crowd. I, as you all know, I'm a massive coward. So I'm quite pleased. We're going to try a bit of magic. Brendan, bribe. Trick it with some false gold. Okay, we're going to bribe. We will turn to page 96. Ooh. What's going to happen? Imagine if we get through this and we win the game in the first playthrough. That would be amazing. 96. They accept your offering and summon the gatekeeper who opens a small doorway in the portcullis to let you in. You leave them squabbling over the gold nugget. Yay! Yay! Good job, all of us. We didn't die and we now get to go through this small doorway to the portcullis. 251. Also, I should say I've never played this. I bought the book to get it signed. So this is the first time playing this with all of you. Exciting. I think my favorite fighting fantasy book that I remember playing was Lizards of the Fire Mountain or something. Anyway, so we have gone from page 96 to, sorry, page 96 to 251. This is a bit like Nightmare, if any of you remember that TV show. You walk forward into a spacious open courtyard surrounded by large walls. Various lights are burning and groups of figures are shuffling around in the darkness. In the center of the courtyard is a large monument of some kind, perhaps a fountain. Looking across the yard, you can see what appears to be the main entrance to a tower. Will you creep around the wall towards the tower? Stride boldly across the courtyard or tiptoe through the shadows towards one of the groups. So that is that there are various uh, groups of figures shuffling around in the darkness. So we can either creep around the wall towards this forbidding black tower, we can stride boldly across the courtyard, or tiptoe through the shadows towards one of the groups. Now you all know me, I am a big scaredy cat, why are these creatures, why are these figures shuffling around in darkness? To me, that says freaking zombies. Um, I have a bit of bard in me, so sometimes I might stride boldly and try and finesse or something. Um, or tiptoe through the shadows. Again, that would be a very Tanith Gaunt's ghost way of doing things. Creep around the wall towards the tower. It's a bit Assassin's Creed. So let's see what the chat is saying. Um, We've got loads of striding and bolding. We're all strider. We're Aragorn. Okay, bit of striding. Stride, be confident. Be bold, be bold. Tall geese, I like tippy toes. Me too. Be bold. Sonicron, received. Steve, tiptoe. And <laughs> Kian, every day I'm shuffling. Let's tiptoe through some shadows. Wombat steroids. It's probably a nightclub. Wouldn't that be a lovely... <laughs> Wouldn't that be a lovely end to the adventure? You've turned you've turned up at a nightclub and they're dropping your tunes. Be big and brave. The Island of the Lizard King. That was the name of the book. Thank you, Robert K. Okay. We're going to be bold. Oh, yeah. That was the two. I was mixing up two. Robert's just saying there were two books. One was Island of the Lizard King. One was Warlock of Firetop Mountain. We're doing Citadel of Chaos. Thank you for, the, for getting that correct, Robert. We need people like you. We need the fact checkers. Okay, we are going to stroll boldly across the courtyard. <sighs> We've been lucky so far. Let's see. 179. Oh, shit, dudes. Okay. As you step out of the shadows towards the center of the courtyard, a voice in the wind cries, Halt! Stand your ground! You whirl around but can see no one addressing you. 
You take another couple of steps. Again, the eerie voice orders you to stop. And this time an arrow zings through the air and lands close to your left foot. You jump back. Still, you can see no one. But now you are stuck. Will you? Press on forwards very cautiously. Make a dash for the monument in the center of the yard. Cast a shielding spell around yourself in advance. So somebody shouting in the wind. Do we press on forwards very carefully? Do we make a dash for that monument, which we think could be a fountain? Or do we cast a shielding spell and advance? Okay, let's see what the, what the chat says. Boldly, Robert K, you are a brave, brave one. Leg it, dash, spell, run for it. Shield, spell, shield, spell, shields up, shield. Well, since we got all the spells, cast a shield in advance. Joshua Branner, shield. If you're going to give us all the spells, let's use them. <laughs> okay, we will do that. It does seem that, that we've got spells is popular. So spells, we're going to turn... Cast a shielding spell around yourself in advance. Turn to three, four, one. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's happening. It's happening. This is horrible. It's so stressful. You cast the spell around yourself in advance. Four or five arrows sing towards you, but stop in the air. A meter before they reach you, dropping harmlessly to the ground. You reach the monument. Remember to cross the shielding spell off your list and turn to 209. Yay! Well done. We did it. I mean, we might, we're basically, we're gaming this, right? Because we're using all the spells. But hey, we're having fun. No one's hurt. No one's, no one's crying. Okay. You cast your eyes over the strange structure. It appears not to be a fountain, but a temple of some sort. So how can a fountain look like a temple? To one side, there is a door which you may investigate. Or you may press onwards towards the citadel itself. If you wish to press onwards, turn to 156. If you wish to investigate, turn to 362. So I guess this is like side quests to the temple or straight on to the boss battle. So do we want to go straight to the citadel or do we want to go into the temple? A temple for tiny little folk. I can't help but, oh my God, we did blue steel. <laughs> We're OP, but we're worth it. Um, I can't help but always investigate. Investigate why it looks like a fountain. <laughs> investigate temple, temple, temple ogre. We didn't die. Yay. Uh, temple, investigate. Okay. Pretty much across the board, everyone's templing. Oh, my God. Brendan, I love the temple icon. So cool. Okay. Sorry. I just received a private message on my WhatsApp, which I can just see. And it's one of my YouTube mentors telling me off for not asking you all for money, which I really hate. And it's really awkward. So I'm not going to do it very often, but I will because my mentor is watching and has pinged me. So I need to remind everybody you can join my Patreon or you can send um, tips through the chat. You don't have to. I just never say it and I should say it. So we're going to investigate the temple. Thank you for bearing with me. It's very embarrassing. Three, six, two. He, he just messaged saying some people would like to support you. Don't deny them. Ian, always hustling, I see. <laughs> it's not always, Ian. I have a few mentors now who are kind of disgusted that I don't. Um, I just haven't got the hang of that bit of YouTubing yet. Do you know what I mean? Like you're going to do a beginning and an end and, and talk about benefits and oh. I will get there. I'll get there. I'll get there. Okay. The door opens and the small room inside is lit by candlelight. Cautiously, you look inside to see a strange sight. On a stone altar in the middle of the chamber are three silver chalices, each containing a different colored liquid. One clear, one red, and one milky. Fluttering around the altar are three small winged gremlin type creatures, all chirping excitedly. Every so often, one lands on the altar and takes a sip of the milky liquid. The open door creaks on its hinges and startles them. They whirl around to see you and become very excited. You may either enter the chamber or close the door quickly and press onwards towards the citadel. So here is the picture of the little gremlins. 
and there are three silver chalices. One has a milky coloured liquid. Oh no! <laughs> Thank you. Oh no, don't. I'm going to get emotional. That's so nice. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's really, really lovely and unexpected. And Okay. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so one clear, one milky, and one red chalice. But the, uh, the choice we get to do is go into this chamber and explore or close the door and go on to the citadel. So what will we do? Ah, <laughs> Eric. Eric and Full Monterey, thank you so much. Freaking hell, Eric, there's a unicorn on your thing. Ah, so good. <laughs> thank you. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, Kian says, American seems much more confident doing it. English and Irish creators, not so much. I agree. I agree. And I have huge imposter syndrome and I feel everyone is so nice to me on here. Like, uh, it feels like a lot, but thank you. Um, okay, so... Stefan, Lise, have a peek inside. Anybody else have any preferences? Do we want to bolt out of here, away from the gremlins? Or um, we're going to go and investigate? I have to say, whenever there's like potions, especially if they're different colours, I get so sucked in. Any DM DMing me could poison me like this. So um, peek. Okay, so we've got three people saying check out the cups. I think we probably should. Let's do it. Always investigated. Should check out that milk to make sure it hasn't expired. Small imp people giving out free drinks. Sounds like a good time. Yay. Oh my God, Alex. Alex has become a space marine. Oh my God. Um, yay, thank you. So welcome. Welcome to YouTube membership. Woo! Oh my gosh. Fantastic. Welcome, 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 Alex. Thank you. I'm feeling very overwhelmed. Please. Um, now I don't do any more because I can feel myself getting emotional and I've I'm also been advised to stop crying on lives. <laughs> so uh, let's investigate. Oh my God. Let's investigate in this chamber. Crikey, crikey, Moses. What a night. As you enter, the gremlins flutter and squeak excitedly, then fly past you through the door and out into the night. You are now alone with the chalices. Will you risk taking a drink? If so, will you choose the clear liquid, the red liquid, or the milky liquid? Or will you leave and head for the citadel? So this is interesting. They've given us three get out clauses now. This is the third entry where they've said, do you want to cut and run? But we now also have the opportunity to have a drink. Um, so should we drink the clear liquid, the red liquid, the milky liquid? Or should we just turn on our heel and escape? I, yeah, Brendan and Christopher are both like, don't drink the milk. I wouldn't mess with gremlin liquid. And Full Monterey said, I hope these aren't moratori <laughs> moratorians. Yes, let's hope they're not poison. Wombat steroids, a nice red. Somicron, drink the red. What could go wrong? Joshua, clear maybe. Interesting, Josh. Rudy can't fail, clear. That's interesting because Rudy's name should give us luck. But we have at the moment got one, two, three for red, four for red, two for clear. No one wants the milk. Um, Brendan's just like definitely drink something. Okay, I'm just going to give it a couple more seconds. I think we're going to drink the red. Okay. Two, six, seven. Yep, yeah, red. Oh, okay. <laughs> As you grasp the chalice, the liquid turns green, then a dirty brown in front of your eyes. It smells putrid, but you take a sip. With a grimace, you spit it out. You're drinking muddy water. You leave the chamber and head for the citadel. Turn to 156 and lose one luck point. Oh, gosh. Oh, Kia. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me do a cry that's so nice of you that's so lovely if nothing else this is for the fantastic graham mcneil interview interviews are wonderful i am thank you so much and i'm so excited to speak to graham mcneil again we are like i'm so stoked for Philgrim. i'm gonna hate it 
Um, yes, thank you so much, Kian. Thank you, thank you. And euros are much better than pounds at the moment, I think, too. So thank you, thank you. So we've drunk dirty, muddy water, but that could have gone so much worse. Yes, Eric, that could have been way worse. Wombat steroids, I can't believe I fell for the muddy water trick again. It's just one of those nights, you know, they're going to always pull that on us. If only we drank that delicious milk. Lovely, lovely mud. Hey, flying. You just flying in? Um, full Monterey. Full groom's fantastic, but you will struggle. Ha ha. I know. I've been warned. Part of me is like just really excited to get full grim done. And then I feel like maybe I'll have a few books before I'm completely grossed out again. Okay, so we're finally going to the Citadel. We haven't died, but we've lost a luck point. Someone needs to remember that. I mean, we are cheating. We're not really doing the rules, but someone should remember that. Okay, as you stride across the open courtyard, you notice that you're walking alongside a small mound, almost like a buried pipeline running from the Black Tower to the temple. You bend over and investigate it. Could it perhaps have been made by a mole of some kind? As you touch the mound, it caves in, and to your horror, a long grey tentacle covered in warty growths bursts out of the ground and wraps itself around your leg. How will you fight this thing? Okay, so this is the horrible warty tentacle. Hi, Alex Sinclair. Welcome, welcome. And th these are options. Draw your sword. Cast a levitation spell. Cast a fire spell. What are we going to do? Activate the trash compactor. <laughs> yes, yes. Has anybody been watching Ashoka? Amazing. Fire, sword, sword. Oh, man. I feel like tentacles. A bit of fire, fire spell. Oh, I wish we did have that trash compactor. Levitate. That's interesting. Levitate. Let's go full mage. Bre Brendan Murray, fire. I feel like sword, sword. Oh, gosh. Okay. So this is really mixed. So I'm going to do count. I will use a pen to count. Fire. One, two, three, four. Um, full Monterey. When you say let's go full mage, specifically how? Levitate or fire? So we've got one, two, three, four for fire. Okay. Somicron. You get two votes because you're Titan level. So we have two votes for Levitate. And Alex should probably get two votes because he just became a member. But it does look like one, two, three, four, five, six votes for Sword. So it looks like we're going to slice it. I'm just going to double check. I'm so scared we're going to die now. This is so much fun. Okay, fire one, two, three, four, and then... Six for sword. Okay, we're gonna go sword. Is everyone ready to maybe die? Let's just hug and, and like fingers crossed. 71, 71, come on 71. Okay, you draw your sword and hack at the tentacle. The tentacle will not fight back as will a normal creature, but instead is trying to drag you into a large hole in the ground, which is opening around its base. Oh, gross. You do not need to roll for the tentacle as it has an attack strength of 15 and a stamina score of two. Throw for combat in the no normal way, but if your own attack strength comes to less than 15, do not subtract, subtract any points from your own stamina. However, if you do not defeat the creatures within three attack rounds, it succeeds in dragging you into its lair and your adventure is over. Okay. I'm going to go get a dice, but don't worry, we're not going to go proper full rules. Hang on. I can show you all my new dice. So this is really, really cute. I had a first date on Friday night from Hinge because I'm forever alone. And the person I met gifted me this set of uh, polyhedral dice. And each of them has a baby unicorn inside. Yay! So I'm going to use my uh, D20 with a baby unicorn inside. How I'm going to play this is the monster has like 15. 
they're pretty cute. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I on a first date, you're just getting to know the person and I'm interested to have a second date and then we'll see. Um, but yeah, it was very, very kind. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just thought it was very, very kind. Um, so I think, so basically because I cheated and I haven't done any of the setup, like, you know, normally you have to roll for strength and stuff. Ooh, how am I going to do this? It should just tell you what your strength is. That would be easier. To determine your initial stamina, roll a die, add six to this number. So we get, we've got to roll two, two D six and add 12. Okay, so that's going to be 18 is our stamina. So we have 18 stamina. My attack strength comes to more than 15. Oh, okay, I'm going to say that we win. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll roll a d20 three times. And if we get a one, we will we'll die. But basically, we because it says you have to do three attack rounds, but basically I think we're going to win. So 16, 15, and four. So we live. Yay! We successfully sliced that bad boy. Okay, if you defeat it, you can peel the tentacle off your leg and proceed to the main entrance to the Black Tower. Turn to 218. Kian, I reckon deduct the two stamina and then say you win. Okay, we could do that. What did I say our stamina was again? 18. Let's do that, because then it looks like we're actually doing stuff. Okay, so our stamina is 16 now. Do we get to keep the tentacle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wombat steroids. Have you played in some of my D&D groups? Um, okay. Uh, poor unicorns must get dizzy. No, they love it. They like being in dice, I'm sure. Um, wow, Sister of Chaos. I remember playing through that book back in the 80s. I loved it and loved the artwork. Everyone should check that out. Thanks, everyone, for everyone. Um, I see I like them. Joshua, good luck. Fly Flynn. Fly Ann. Flynn. Dice are a girl's best friend after all. Certainly more useful than diamonds. Yes, Brendan. Um, oh, goodbye, Brendan. Thanks for joining. So, so appreciated. I should probably get through with this. Okay. Um, so we're going to proceed to the main entrance of the Black Tower, 218. I wonder if Jordan Sorcery did the proper dice and set up and everything. Yes, Brendan, thank you so much for joining us. Very, very awesome to have your company. Thank you. Um, okay. In front of you is a large wooden door, firmly locked. You may either knock three times for the guard or you may use a strength spell to try and open it. Are we gonna knock or are we gonna use our strength spell? Ralph Chilton, and we're going to live. <laughs> we're alive. Everyone for everyone, knock. Okay, we did have a, a bit of luck earlier finessing some guards with a knock. Two for knocking. Knock, it's only polite. Oh, Wombat, please tell me you do an actual play or something. I feel like knocking and be like, hey, guard, I just stabbed these tentacles is a bad idea. <laughs> Strength spell. Okay, Somi, you're going to get two votes. I wonder if there are people just tuning in, like, what are these people talking about? Okay, so at the moment we've got four votes for knock, five votes for knock, two votes for strength spell, full Monterey, give the guard the tentacle. How that's disgusting. <laughs> that sounds very nurgly. Is it nurgly would, that would do that or slanishy? I don't know. Probably slanish. Knock. Okay, we're going to knock. Somi. We've had a good run. I hope that this is not the thing that kills us. We're going to knock three times. One, one, eight. Ooh. Actually, it's fun to do it with all of you. Like, if I was doing this by myself, it would be stressing me out too much. Both. Burgle. <laughs> the door opens and a large, brutish creature steps out. It has a sharp horn in the middle of its forehead and its skin appears to be armor-plated. It grunts to ask you what you want and demands the password before letting you in. 
do you know the password? We don't. If so, turn to 273. If not, you will have to bluff your way in. So this is the guard. I got excited when I read one it has a horn, but it's a rhino guard. Oh, crumbs. Yes, exactly, Ralph Chilton. This is what you get for being polite. Swordfish, tell the guard, hippity hoppity, this is now my property. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Kian and Wombat, we're definitely doing a game. You're coming to play at the table. Um, Bill making stuff. Good evening, Bill. Oh, my God, I love that. <laughs> okay, we don't have the password. There's cheating and then there's cheating. I think we're going to have to try and bluff. So let's go to 198. I wonder if they've adapted this, because I remember when I used to play this in the 80s, you would die all the time. You literally only got five passes and you died. Okay, you think quickly. You reach into your bag and pull out a handful of weeds. Showing them to the creature, you explain that you are a herbalist and have come to treat the Lord's librarian who's critically ill. The messenger never told you of any passwords. Will he believe you? Test your luck. If you're lucky, he believes you and lets you in. If you're unlucky, he doesn't care who you are and may not enter without the password. And you may not enter without the password. He advances towards you with his pike. Okay. So we have to roll for luck. At the very beginning, we lost one luck point. We lost a luck point because we, we drank the muddy water. So, yeah, that sucks. I mean... We are supposed to have minus one luck. Let me just see what you roll to test your luck here. Sorry, I should have prepared this before. Roll one die, add six to this number and enter this total in the luck box. Okay, so this is us setting up our luck. Oh God, that's one. So we have seven luck, <laughs> not the muddy water. We have seven luck minus one, we have six. Okay, so now we're going to test our luck. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Sometimes you'll be told to test your luck. Roll two dice. If the number rolled is equal to or less than your current luck score, you've been lucky. Okay, so uh, we are dead. Your current luck score is six, so I'm going to roll two d6. So I've rolled a six. <laughs> oh, we're dead. I rolled a six and a five, so 11. We've been unlucky. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry. Okay. If he, you are unlucky, he doesn't care who you are, and you may not enter without the password, and he advances towards you with his pike. Turn to page 290. Oh, no. Sorry, everybody. The rhino man steps forward and jabs at you with its pike. You leap quickly out of the way. Although it's not wearing armour, its thick hide looks protection enough. You must decide whether to take it on in combat or to use your magic. Will you draw your sword or try a spell? You may try. A weakness spell, a levitation spell, a strength spell, or we can draw our swords. What are we going to do? We can draw our sword. We can use a weakness spell. A levitation spell or a strength spell? I mean, I feel there is a hint in this text. Like if I was a DM and I was like, although it's not wearing armor, it's thick hide looks protection enough. I would be trying to say to my players, you probably need a bazooka gun or a titan to, yeah. So let's see what the chat says. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love, <laughs> can we just look ahead at the chat? We're dead. We're not dead yet. Uh-oh. Oof. Okay, we're dead. <laughs> okay, okay. Where is a Reva Titan when you need it? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so sword, let me count. I've got my counting pen out. One sword, one for swording. Stefan, you love a swording. Okay, weakness, one, two, Three, four, five for weakness, or levitating is one, two, three, four, five for levitating. Oh, Lord. 
No one went for a strength spell. Okay. Okay. Has anybody not voted yet? Okay. So, Eric, you've just come and tipped it in. Fuck. No, actually, Somicron and Alex get two votes because they're members. So let me do a recount. Let me do a recount. Okay. Weakness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven for weakness because Somicron and Alex get two votes because they membered up. I know, drama. <laughs> I'm actually sweating. Um, so seven for weakness. Levitate is one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like we're going to try weakness spell. Fingers crossed. We're going to turn to page. I think YouTube chat has a polling system. It does. It does. Okay, on the next one, hopefully we'll live to fight again. So, okay, we'll do polling after that. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very new at this. Like, so where I'm really terrible at asking for money, I'm also really bad at knowing all the, yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so I think we need to do weakness. So let's go to 307. We are learning. We are learning. As you cast the spell, the creature lunges at you and clips your arm with its pike. Lose two stamina points. We're down to 14 stamina points. Then the weakness spell takes effect. The creature slows down and starts puffing and panting. You draw your sword and advance to finish him off. So the Rhino Man has a skill of four and stamina of seven. We have a stamina of 14 and we didn't roll our skill. I would like to suggest that we say we kill the Rhino Man, but maybe we take one damage to our stamina, which would take us to 13 stamina. Does pe do people think that's acceptable? Okay. Okay, I'm going to say we defeat him and we can enter the Citadel. Yay! Turn to 177. Imagine if Steve Jackson was watching this and he was like, you've cheated. I'm going to report you to the publisher. Yay, kill Rhino, dude. I know we didn't kill him. We just knocked him unconscious with the hilt of the sword and left the tentacle on top of him and ran away. Okay. Um, all right. You are in a narrow hallway. This continues for several meters and ends in a doorway. Halfway along the passage, you can see an archway where some steps lead downwards. Will you go forwards towards the door or creep down the steps? Oh no, don't say that. I think we just killed a dude. And... <laughs> no, we didn't kill anything. We knocked it out. We did that thing in D&D. &D. What was it called? Non-lethal blow. So will we go forwards to the door or creep down the steps? Everything for everyone. Always creep. Okay. <gasps> wait, wait, wait. Let me do a poll. Let me do a poll. Uh, creep or door. Creep. Door. Okay. <gasps> Did it work? <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Real time. <laughs> Always be creeping, ABC. <laughs> you hear a party down the steps and what sounds like people doing the time warp. <laughs> We're silly, guys. We're silly. Okay. It looks like creep has won at 89%. Um, okay, so let's turn to page 344. 344. What's going to happen? Okay. You follow the stairs down downwards. The air is cool and stagnant. At the foot of the stairs is a door. Will you try the door? Or climb the stairs again and go up to the door on the ground floor? So it looks like we have a downstairs floor door and an upstairs floor door. So I will say up or down door, up 
or down. Okay, ask your community. Okay, here we go. Pull time. Pull time. Down, 100%. I see you shiver with anticipation. Never go backwards, down door. We're, going, we're letting ourselves in the basement, aren't we? Who knows? We could end up at like some, you know, some person who's living with their mom and dad. Well, since we've come down here, let's keep going. Down real careful, like... I'm, why am I hearing that in the voice of what's his name from Firefly? Down, real careful, like totally trying to turn this into the Rocky Horror Show. <laughs> okay. So we've got 17 votes. There's a potential 33 of us, but I think some of us may be like just painting or sleeping. So I think we're going to go down. Hey, one true kit. Okay, we're going to go down. We're going to try the, the door at the foot of the stairs. Turn to page seven. It never feels good in a fighting fantasy book where you turn to number seven. It's so at the beginning. It makes me worried. Ah, oh, the door is locked. You may try to break it down by charging it with your shoulder. Or you may cast a strength spell on yourself and try to wrench the door off its hinges. What are we going to do? A shoulder charge. I know everything for everyone. I had a really sad evening. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's why I did this, to cheer myself up. And I've actually laughed a lot, which is nuts, because who knew the chat was so funny? Okay, let's do a little poll. Pardon for the admin here. If I was a proper YouTuber, I'd have, like, a buddy, a moderator or something. So, but it's just me. You get to see the raw nuts and bolts of me doing it. Okay. Ask your community. I'm asking them. The shoulder charge is clearly a jump to the left. <laughs> Amen. Seems like a waste of a spell. Shoulder, shoulder charge. Um, full Monterey. I'm glad we can all cheer each other up. The one true kit. Did you ever see Nightmare on ITV in the 90s? One true kit, I can tell you something even more impressive. My friend Paul Flannery, who is an actor and lover of all things gaming, um, actually plays Treyguard in the um, live show of Nightmare and has let me come on stage and play games with him. So, yeah, it's, he's pretty cool. Um, I was just wondering if I had a photo of him I could show you. Yeah. Yeah. So this is my friend, Paul Flannery, and this is Tom Bell, and they do Nightmare Live. They have um, Lord Fear's um, helmet and everything. Tomorrow I'll post on my Instagram and Twitter so you guys can see if you're interested. In I met Paul. Isn't Paul lovely? A strength spell to the, to the right. Glad to hear he's still with us. If this was Nightmare, much of the skull would be exposed by now, yes. Yeah, I actually met the um, real tray guard at a convention and I got a picture with him and he was lovely and he was alive. I was once a contestant on Nightmare Live too. Yes, I mean, if Paul starts doing that show again, we should definitely do an outing. It's great. Okay, so let's have a look at the poll. 19 votes, 58 have said strength spell. We, we, we might as well, right? We have all the spells. So let's go to 116. Let's see what happens. Yes, your super powered hands grip the handle and tug. It comes off in your grip. You bunch up a fist and slam it into the center of the door. The wood cracks and breaks, allowing you to break through into the room beyond. Turn to 210. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, strength spell. You now stand in a large round room. It's lit by a single torch fixed into one wall. There's no furniture in the room, save for a rough wooden table and chair in the center. Hovering above the table, fast asleep is a very small man dressed in a green shirt and pantaloons. He cannot be more than a meter tall and you cannot believe he is still asleep after your noisy entrance. You hear a creak and turn to your right in time to see a small catapult fire a missile of some sort straight at you. It's going to hit you unless you use a shielding spell. 
If you use this spell, turn to 192. If you cannot or will not, turn to 359. I think we're going to use a shielding spell. This is the illustration of the little green guy floating above the table. Oh, bye, Stefan. Great to see you. Yeah, have a lovely, lovely day or evening or night. He's definitely a, re a leprechaun. We're basically Gandalf. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> yes, we are. Okay. One, nine, two. Let's cast this shield spell. You cast the spell just in time. The missile hits your magical shield and splatters against it, dribbling onto the floor. You test the resulting mush to see what it was. You were nearly hit by a tomato. Tomato, if you're American. In the center of the room, the sleeping figure is stirring. Oh, that was a, that made us use up a spell because it was just a tomato. Very tricksy, these books. But I appreciate the, uh, the nuance there. 29, 29. Okay. Didn't we already use the shield spell? We basically, Wombat Steroids, we're kind of just using all the spells. Um, so we get to play together for longer. And I didn't realize you have to set this up like a D&D &D game. Um, so, yeah. Um, we have infinite spell slots. Exactly. We're like level 20. Cautiously, you approach the little man. As you get close, a single eye opens and looks you straight in the face. A wide grin spreads between the creature's ears and he disappears. Oh no, Kian, please forgive me. Good morning to you, says a chirpy little voice behind you. And you swivel around to see him standing there, still grinning. I'm all Seamus, the leprechaun, he chuckles. This is so racist, I'm so sorry. It was the 80s and holds his hand out to you. He seems friendly enough. Will you shake his hand and try to befriend him or will you draw your sword? So it's time for another poll. Friend or foe? Handshake or draw sword? Ask your community. What will the community say? Oh my God, Kian, you were right. I'm so sorry. I hope that that's not traumatized you. I'd like to apologize for that horrific accent. I suggest we eat the tomato. Yes, we will save that for our rations. Darn wasted a shield spell. Does he look like Warwick Davies? He attacked first, there can be only one response. Spoken like a true emperor's children. Somi Kwan, have you told me your legion yet? Are you, I feel like if I was an ultramarine, I'd be like, I'm gonna shake his hand. Oh, I'm getting the two ultramarine books. So I can talk about them with Graham McNeil. That's happening. My friend Jim, who's one of my mentors, sent me, um, sending me the two ultramarine books. So yeah, good to know. Don't worry, that was a decent Irish accent. Oh, thank you so much. I had um, a massive crush on a chap called Rob Ross from a place called Athlone for one summer about 25 years ago. Just such a dreamy accent. Okay, I play ultramarines, but the army isn't fully painted yet. But my titan is... Somicron, you need to DM me or at me on Twitter at Miraranga and send a picture of your Titan. I need to see the Titan. I need to see the Titan. Okay, everybody in the chat agrees with me that you need to show us your Titan. Amazing, brilliant. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful. Um, I think they are the Uriel Ventress books. They are. There are two books and they're both written by Graham McNeil. And as I'm interviewing Graham about Fulgrim, I'm going to use the opportunity to talk to him about those two. So Omicron, bear in mind, I didn't paint it myself. I gave it to a pro to do. We're just going to take a Titan break while I pull this link up for all of us. Okay, it's not there yet. Just let me know when you've done it. No pressure and we'll share it with the chat. Okay. So you might struggle at certain part of Uriel books. Oh, Lord. 25 years ago, white Mariah, you couldn't be a day over 23, smile. <laughs> I am 46 years old. Every time someone mentions a Titan, I can't help, there must be a loosens too. <laughs> I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna be asked to do a panel or something at Comic-Con, one true kit, and I'm gonna use your freaking line and I'm gonna sound really funny. Um, okay, so while Somicron is finding us this Titan, not a loosen, a Titan, Let's make friends with 
Um, shame, Seamus the Leprechaun. Okay, 271. We're going to try and befriend him. Okay, you grasp your hand. You grasp his hand and introduce yourself and cry out as the nerves go down your arm. Your arm goes numb. Oh, Seamus bursts out laughing. <laughs> Lose one skill point as you're using your sword arm. You're becoming angry, but the little man continues to shake your hand and laugh. A laugh comes from behind you and you look to see him floating in the air, grinning. But you're still shaking his hand in front of you, or are you? In fact, you now realise you're frantically shaking hands with a stuffed dummy which is flopping around on the end of your arm as you shake it. You throw it to the ground, but it's stuck to your hand. The situation is ludicrous and you're becoming angry, very angry. Just a little joke, says the leprechaun, who snaps his ringers. He snaps his fingers. That's a typo. Look, we found a typo. Um... He snaps his fingers. The dummy disappears. Now, what can I do for you? Will you ask him the way onwards or draw your sword? Now, I know you're a Warhammer crowd. I know that he has potentially insulted us, but we've got really far in this adventure and maybe this leprechaun will help us. Befriend or end? Friendship or draw sword? And the book is trying to make us do the thing. Oh, I didn't mean to add an option. Okay. Sorry, I've added an extra option. I'm just saying we're a Warhammer crowd. Yes, violence has its place, but we have got really far in this adventure. Like, you know, be he friend or be he foe. Yay, friendship, 91%. Oh my gosh. Yay, 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 yay. Okay. This is great. Just turned off Boulder's Gate and right into killing or not leprechauns. Hi, Robin. Welcome, welcome. Robin is on one of my patrons. Thank you so, so much for joining, Robin. Much appreciated. We're just going to have a quick Titan break. So Somicron has sent his Titan to my Twitter. Uh, oh, thanks for the follow everything for everyone. Where did you send it, Somi? Where would I find it? Or are you Somicron on Twitter and I need to find you? Help me, Obi-Wan. You are my only hope. Well, when I tweet it out, it changes the handle. Can you link us? Could you put a link in the chat and we can go look? Um, just so long as show me your Titan isn't a euphemism. I mean, Titans are cool. They should not be made euphemisms of. There are way more things in Warhammer to make euphemisms of than Titans. Watch out, Itchy. He's Irish. 46. No way, although nice people don't age the same way. Mean people do. I Yeah, I have a very small face. That's why I look. And I have freckles. I think that makes me look younger. But I keep my hair grey. Um, I'm just trying to like embrace my age. And uh, I can't wait to be a granny and get loads of respect. I went, not like a granny with grandchildren, but just like an elderly with like a white bob of hair going, can I sit down? Leprechaun rhyming slang, bell ringers, fingers, love that. Kian, get him to say his name backwards. Robin, remove his head. Best to show a sense of humour when dealing with the fae. Wombat, that's the most sensible thing you said all night. I love that. Kian, orc knobs, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. The euphemisms are written for us. Warhammer, I was searching for Citadel of Chaos stuff. Don't know why I thought of it, but this is what I found. Yay. Hi, everything for everyone. I'm Mira. I love loads of stuff. I love D&D. I love fantasy. I love science fiction. But most people like my channel for the Warhammer content, which I like Warhammer, but it also scares me. Um, I'm nice and I'm aging like an apple in the sun. <laughs> I'm so mean to yourself. That's so mean to yourself. Never heard that expression. I'm also going to steal that to use. Thunder Happer. Amen. Exactly. Mostly harmless. I thought 46 was a joke. So did I. Believe me, it, it ain't. It ain't. But that's why I am hoping eventually one day I will find a partner to share my life with. Because the older you get, the less chance you have of meeting somebody. Um, Somicron. Powerfish jokes write themselves. 
for Monterey. I thought I was doing well, but I found the gray the other day. My advice is embrace the gray because you are a totally awesome, valid human and the grays show your experience in life and appearance doesn't really matter. Like the people who want you to look like you don't have gray hair, probably the people who care too much about appearance and you're lovable and adorable just as you are. So just embrace the gray. Um, it took me a long time to, but it's okay. And it saves me money and you don't have to use chemicals in your hair. And yeah, I sometimes pretend they're like magical silver strands of hair because I'm like a witch or something, which is probably why I look young because I'm sure there's some, you know, lack of maturity. Um, you're so welcome. Befriend a friend lest you be cursed the rest of your day. Somicron, I can't see the link. Um, did you at me on Twitter? If you put an at Miramanga, or what is your Twitter name? Could you just type your Twitter name without the at? Maybe that will let us see it. You can find me at Somicron. I'm just being so de dense about this. Sorry, everybody. We could probably have done this in two seconds flat. Yeah, everybody, everybody. Oh my gosh, so cool. So cool. Yes, Titan. Amazing. Let's just all take a Titan break. Wow. Wow. Look at the detail. It's so pretty. I love those colors. <gasps> Look at the little guy inside the Titan. This is everything I hoped and dreamed of. Like, look at the detail, the little radar inside. Oh my God. That's so beautiful. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Look at the detail, the little controller on the inside. So you have to tell me, I know this is really bad. So the two main colors I see on your Titan are like a kind of teal blue and then the then this kind of gold rust color and then the sign the heraldry is like a kind of T symbol or like an ice pick over a circle. So you're going to have to tell me what legion that Titan is from. It's very cool. Oh, Steve, I've been ironing my youngest lad's school uniform as you've been chatting. Is it back to school on this week? Bless them, poor kids. I remember having to go back to school. It's just the worst thing ever. Titans are usually from houses, not chapters. Thordalim, this is a whole new thing I have to learn, houses. The Legion symbol is on the other shoulder, it's Legio Griffinicus. That's a rad looking Titan, it looks amazing. Befriend a Fae, lest ye be cursed the rest of your days. Where's that from, Sterling? I love that. So it doesn't belong to a chapter. Legio Griffinicus, that's the thing. Oh gosh, I'm glad Ian's not watching this. He would tell me off for not knowing this. Spare a thought for me. I'm a teacher. Oh, my God. Sending you so much teacher love. Thank you. Thank you for your service. I still at 39 hate back to school ads. I think we can all agree back to school is awful. The Legios are independent. Good. Because it's probably the best way to go. Independent outside of those messed up things. Our biter Ian did a video recently on the Mechanicus Titans, etc. I know, but I try not to watch the law videos that Ian does. I do watch them. But the best thing about being friends with Ian is sitting down next to him and asking him all the questions. That's so much more fun than just watching his video. So, yeah, I know. I will ask him. I maybe, maybe I'll do a let's react to his Titan video or something. I'll do a reaction video. Okay, Somi, thank you so, so much for sharing your Titan. I think we all love it. It's absolutely beautiful. You are going to have to let us know. You're going to have to tweet if you're going to take it and play it at any tournaments or anything. I always love the idea of taking a Titan and then like a 
squig or something. Um, but I think what I really wanted was like a Necron Titan, which doesn't exist, but you could kit bash it. So it would have like neon on it. I don't know if that, and then the person inside would be a baby Necron. Anyway, that was just a thought. It might be dumb, but yeah. Um, Kian, that sucks. Twitter won't let you view. Oh, is that because Somi's account is private? Maybe. Um, if you don't mind. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much, Kian. Thank you for sharing the love. Somi, I think it's so cool that you're sharing your Titan with us because most of us would love one, but we just ain't going to get one. So thank you for sharing the fun and excitement of your Titan. Amazing. Um, okay. So we're going to ask the Leprechaun the way onwards. Yeah, bloody fucking... <gasps> I said I swear. Bloody Elon Musk has ruined Twitter. 348. Befriending the Leprechaun. Sterling, say the rhyme again. Oh, I shouldn't go this way, says O'Shamus. These are not pleasant parts. These three doors are the only ways on them. Two of them are very dangerous and the other is very smelly. On the opposite side of the room are three doors. One has a brass handle, one has a copper handle and one has a bronze handle. Which will you choose? You can choose the brass, copper or bronze handle door or we can ask for his advice. So, uh, let's do a poll. I'm really liking this. Um, we do. I mean, I'm really liking the poll option. Thanks for letting me know. Brass, copper, bronze. Okay, so these are our polling options. Okay, while you're polling, I'm gonna read out. Le Le Legio Ordax are my favorite. They only use Warhounds in a pack. Need a swear jar, we do need a swear jar. I would pay all of you. How would that work? Twitter ruined itself. Um, angsty Space Elf, closest to a Necron Titan is the Serapet. Serap tech, which is smaller than the Titans. I know, but part of the glory of the Titans' angry space elf is that they are so big, it's ridiculous. Um, uh, ask. One true kit, they're also similar. Kian, Leprechaun advice is not renowned for its accuracy. Uh, character has really good eyesight to tell the difference in the metals. We do, Ralph. Ask for advice. He might trick us, but I don't think he'll get us killed or anything. <laughs> Copper door, the policeman behind it will be able to help you. Very good. Um, Joshua, I would have voted for copper, but I want to see if you can get more info. Eldar get Titans, Necrons don't for some reason. I know, I thought that was weird. I wondered if it was because they would be a robot inside a robot, but hey-ho. Okay, so we're going to ask for his advice. Page 68. Okay. Which would I take, he muses. Let's see. I would not take the one two doors to the left of the copper-handled one, nor the door to the right of the bronze-handled one. Which one will you choose? Oh, it's a riddle. It's a riddle. I would not take the one two doors to the left of the copper-handled one, nor the door to the right of the bronze-handled one. And I can't remember what they look like because I, uh, I left the page behind. Oh, flipping heck. Okay. Okay, it doesn't say it doesn't say the order of the doors anywhere. It says on the opposite side of the room are three doors. One has a brass handle, one has a copper handle, and one has a bronze handle. 
Okay. So there are two doors to the left of the copper handled one. And there is a door to the right of the bronze handled one. Oh, I don't know. Oh, thank you so much, Kian. Yes, um, have a lovely sleep. Thank you so, so much for joining. I hope you get to join us on a live again. Thank you. Too tired for choose your own adventure math. I know we're all getting tired. Should we just go copper because of the copper joke? I think let's go copper. Let's go copper. We're tired. We've done this for an hour and 15 minutes, everybody. Well done us. And we haven't died yet. You open the door and step out into a long, dark corridor. Turn to 188. A sudden, intense flash of light bursts out in front of you. You shield your eyes and then rub them, but you cannot see. Panic hits you as you hear a low growling noise. Padded footsteps come closer and you cry out in pain as this unseen creature roars and embeds its sharp teeth in your leg. Are we going to cast a strength spell, a weakness spell or draw our sword? It's time for a poll. Also, I did think we'd be dead by now. <laughs> I literally thought we'd be dead. Um... So I guess we should think about how to end this if we, because otherwise we could go until like two in the morning. Add option sword. Ask your community. Necrons don't have a Titan because Necrons weren't a thing when they made all the Titans for Epic. I'm shocked we lived through the guard. Me too. Ralph, I know that feeling that. Oh, looks like weakness spell. Okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. What's mm, gonna happen? You cast your weakness spell. Hopefully you wait for the creature's strength to fade, but its teeth still maul you. You're dismayed to find that its attack is becoming more ferocious. You cannot feel your leg now. The pain is intense. You feel faint and lose consciousness as the jaws close on your throat. Oh God, see what happened when Kian left. Should we blame Kian? <laughs> oh, you awake and look around. As your memory returns, you're amazed that you can see. Your leg feels tender, but it is injured. You hear a small chuckle coming from above and suddenly the whole thing makes sense. Floating above you is O'Shamus, now laughing loudly. The whole thing has been one big practical joke. You are enraged and leap to your feet. But as you glare at the funny little man rolling about in the air in hysterics, you can't help but see the funny side too. You chuckle, then giggle, then laugh loudly. For some time, the two of you roar with laughter until tears stream down your faces. Ha ha ha! I thought I was dead. How hilarious. When you are both able to control yourselves, you eventually settle down to a chat. He's a pleasant little man. Before you leave, he says... Indeed, you are a good sport. Your way ahead is fraught with danger, though, but perhaps these will help you. With a wave of his hand, a sword and a plate appear on the table. The sword is a magical battle sword and will add one point to the dice roll when throwing for your attack strength. The plate is, in fact, a silver mirror of fine workmanship. You can take these with you, but you'll have to leave your old sword behind. Not a problem. And now we still have to choose a bloody door to leave through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down magic battle sword and silver mirror, which means there's going to be a basilisk or a medusa in this dungeon. I know because I play D&D. &D. That's so smug. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, I feel like the plate is important. The plate is the silver mirror. Okay, so it's getting really late and my heart feels happy and I'm much happier after my kind of a little bit negative evening. So thank you all for joining us. I think we should go through the... If I look on the poll above where we had Ask O'Shamus more stuff, 
brass, copper, bronze. Um, good night, Josh. Um, shall we go for brass? Because, like, got quite a few votes in that vote. Let's just go for brass. See what happens. And, th and then I'll say good night properly. The brass handle door. Turn to 386. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. Outside the door, the passage slopes down and you follow it for several minutes. You notice an unpleasant smell which gets stronger and stronger as you go. Eventually, you come to an opening. Looking through it, holding your nose, you can see a large open sewer flowing across the passageway. A rope hangs down from the ceiling. Will you wade across the sewer or try to grab the rope and swing across? Well, I'm going to use my guide to um, Morden Hall Rose Garden to keep a note of this page. And hopefully next Sunday night we can come together and complete the quest, but a little bit earlier than 11 at night. Cliffhanger, but I am really, really grateful for everybody that came along and hung out in the chat. Um, I have received so much grace and kindness and love from people who love Warhammer and have come and been really kind and amazing on this channel. And yeah, I couldn't think of a nicer bunch of chaps and chapesses to hang out with. So thank you so, so much. Um, yeah, if you'd like to stay on touch, in touch, like Twitter's quite good for messaging and stuff. And um, yay. Oh, Somi, maybe I can send that message. If you've got an imager link, let's see if it's on your Twitter. Because I think it will let me put a link, but maybe not you. Um, here we go. Fantastic. Let me see if I can post this link to all of us. Hello, just got here. Recap. Can you guys see the imager link in the chat? It was an unexpected delight. It was freaking beautiful and everybody here was a big part of it um nick wake we played through the game and we didn't die but we did cheat um that's what happened but please stay in touch and i'm gonna try and do a live next saturday sunday evening oh no can i yes i should be able to sunday evening next week um but much much earlier than like 11 at night and thank you all so much for being here. If you'd like to be in touch, like Twitter is good, or you can leave comments on YouTube. Cheating is core of Final Fantasy. It's not cheating if we're all in on it. But yay, have a lovely, lovely evening. Thank you so much for the giggles and keeping us alive. Uh, thank you to Steve Jackson for writing this. And have a lovely, lovely rest of your bank holiday weekend. And see you all soon. Okay. Oh, sh shoot. Okay, yes. I have a patron. You can support me through that. Um, and you can subscribe to this channel and you can also become a member. And thank you all. See, I did remember at the end. Have an amazing evening, everybody. Good night. Bye.